Hello and welcome to this Manufacturing Systems Technology Module 44. We had discussed in details about the Toyota production system, its objectives and started discussing some of the components of the TPS including the automation, Kanban and Jidoka. There are many other such uh, uh, components which are important for describing the Toyota production system as such. One of them is called for example the Yoidon. So this uh, refers to the coordinated movement of subassembly. Obviously, uh, the emphasis of uh, a good production system which is lean managed is that you can make the whole product modularly designed and uh, these modulations or this modularity uh, can be exercised in terms of different sections, dedicated sections uh, supplying the modules together which come into the main assembly and get fitted in a modular manner. So the, uh, the first uh, essence of the Yoidon really starts from the product development stage itself when you basically look into the uh, you know the uh, the modularity of the uh, the whole assembly process okay and that's uh, a design stage and uh, the moment this design gets uh, uh, realized in terms of uh, production obviously there have to be dedicated sections called sub assemblies okay which uh, are going to result in some modularity for example let's say in a uh, car assembly line if we are uh, wanting to make the door sub assembly as such separate. So that is a module which comes and gets added to the vehicle as the vehicle rolls in the assembly line at a certain uh, point. So when you are doing that and let us say if you have actually been able to convert the, the door sub assembly as a separate entity and uh, there are a lot of uh, defects that you automatically can get eliminated uh, just because of the lesser handling of the door. So the door is being constructed and added to the material just before leaving the final assembly line and that way you can actually prevent a lot of defects uh, from happening into uh, that section. So the Yoidon actually refers to a coordinated approach to simultaneous production of parts and sub-assemblies. In mixed model production this is a problem that uh, you do not have a control on what is the following model uh, provided one model has already been assembled. And so therefore there has to be a plan which can indicate the kind of subassembly which has to be initiated and mind you there is a whole subassembly process starting from beginning to end which may be about 10 stations or more or maybe even 30 stations or 40 stations and so you have to sequence the doors or you have to sequence the modules that you eventually want to construct in the same manner as the sequence of the variants which are present in the main assembly. So the product variants in the main assembly may be 1000 and there may be uh, at a certain single point of time a, a completely randomized distribution of let us say 2 of one kind, 5 of another kind, 7 of another kind. So this sequence has to be obeyed as far as the modularity. Uh, the modular manufacturing is uh, or the module manufacturing is concerned or the sub assembly manufacturing is concerned. Okay. So there has to be a translation of that sequence. So therefore, uh, Yoidon is basically a system which leads to that, that how you can simultaneously produce a subsystem uh, <coughs> so that it can in a coordinated manner arrive at the assembly point of the ma <coughs> main product as and when needed. Uh, that is what Yoidon suggests. Uh, then obviously the JIT system which is the most distinctive among uh, all these uh, systems which are used for the TPS uses this Kanban or use of the Kanban. Kanban actually in Japanese means visible record so therefore uh, you are talking about a uh, system which uh, is sort of making the record of the inventory requirement visible at different places. It is a system of tags and cards obviously attached uh, to parts and subassembly containers. So there are many kind of Kanbans, uh, there can be a production Kanban, a signal Kanban, there can be something related to uh, you know uh, even a lot ordering uh, kind of a situation where instead of a one component you are having a Kanban card to a lot of different components. So there are many many such different forms of Kanbans, there is emergency Kanban etc. And each of them has a certain utility and we will have to in this particular module, uh, in, in this particular uh, topic really investigate some of the basic differences that the different types of Kanbans have and how they can be optimized so that the production level keeps on uh, smoothly flowing you know uh, from the beginning station to the end station of the production process. So the problem areas in any production situation that are responsible for higher production cost, low quality and high delivery lead time uh, are sort of classified as the wastes in a uh, Toyota production system. And these elements of wastes are uh, also in short called the three M's. Uh, 
uh, where all uh, each and every of this M has a meaning. Typically in Japan uh, or in the in the Japanese uh, uh, manufacturing system, and it's actually a Japanese term also which is used here. The first M is called muda, and uh, I will just explain to you what muda means. Uh, the second is mura, and the third is muri. Okay, so these are called the three M's, and they have each of them has a certain meaning. Uh, which I would like to investigate now. So, muda is a Japanese word referring to any work or any element of the production that does not add value to the product. So, in fact, let us talk about a car assembly for example, if you have uh, uh, committed a mistake somewhere due to which there is a defective assembly. For example, <coughs> let us say the seat bolt has not been mounted properly and the seat therefore, one of the bolts are having a cross threads. Okay. So, this is a wastage, it is a completely non value added uh, work that is compounded because you want to make the product good quality and send it to the customer. So, the, the philosophy is that it should be at the first time produced in the right manner, but because of unfortunately whatever disbalances of the system uh, which can be preventable otherwise, this defect has arised or this defect has arisen. So, now the question is that if uh, are we able to really add value uh, to uh, to the system by doing this, uh, obviously it is a necessary evil that has to be addressed because it is a defect, the defect cannot go to the customer. Uh, so, this uh, work had it been done before in the assembly process itself and it would have been uh, very nicely uh, able to get recorded as a zero defect, it would have uh, given a, a customer a lot of satisfaction. Okay. So, uh, this kind of work has to be eliminated that is by and large the vision of the Toyota production system. In fact, uh, the useful work in Jap Jap Japanese uh, language is called Shigoto and uh, the idea is that the Shigoto should always be more than the Muda okay. and Shigoto should be much much more than the Muda. So, that the useful part of the work which is adding value to the system should be the more prominent and the waste part of the work which is otherwise not adding value, but is a necessary component because of whatever defect has opened or whatever process uh, flaw has happened uh, is, a, is, is called the muda which gets carried forward as a loss to the company. Okay. So, the tightness of the control is such that the muda is eliminated to the maximum possible at all extents in the assemblies and in the you know even at the sub assembly level. So, that is muda and uh, unfortunately if you look at a manufacturing system the shigoto is almost always. Uh, very low in comparison to the muda and you will have to sort of criss cross it with the shigoto going up and the muda going down. That is what your management activity should focus around. Okay. So, there are many kind of muda. So, if we look at into the various kind of wasteful activities which are there in a system, uh, obviously we need to design plan and control such mudas. So, there can be a muda for correction for example, as I was mentioning the rework process necessary for correcting a defective part. Okay, that means extra cost that should have been avoided at the first place. So, this is the muda for correction or repair. There can be a muda for overproduction. So, it can either uh, be resulting from you know producing more than necessary or producing at a higher rate. Sometimes uh, you know uh, people would in order to protest against some management decision be able enable to uh, work at a higher rate and produce more. Okay, so, there they want to disbalance this whole fine line of system. So, that should be controlled. Uh, at the first instance, the harmony with which uh, uh, the process uh, has been designed should be at no level sacrificed and there should be the exact flow rate uh, which the process is supposed to or balanced to handle continued throughout the process. So, the management's role here in the TPS is really to look that there is no overproduction at any particular point. Person should not work harder or work uh, sort of a you know at a higher speed. Uh, to to overproduce. There are many flaws if that happens. First of all, if the, the person is giving less time to the per unit production, there may be an issue related to the quality of the product. The quality may go down because of the less time and there may be defective parts produced which are in any event going to create this balance in the whole uh, the, the, the process flow. Okay. So, uh, by and large you need to eliminate the, the muda for overproduction. 
Muda for processing of course, this refers, uh, refers to the unnecessary processing work. For example, <coughs> process can be made simpler by probably time and motion study and if that has not been executed properly, uh, there can be repetition of a step which is otherwise wasteful. Okay, so there has to be a very critical analysis of each and every motion study related to the personnel who are deployed in a particular product assembly. And that can be uh, with the most modern uh, ways and means of visual communication be able to get uh, eliminated. And uh, obviously, if that happens, then the muda for processing, that is the unnecessary processing activity which otherwise could have been eliminated gets removed from the system. So, overall there will be a highly productive system if such wasteful motions are identified at the minutest levels and tried to uh, eliminate. There is a muda in conveyance of course, which means that the material handling uh, is an important element and that has to be somehow uh, minimal uh, because uh, for example, the truck loading unloading may take place close to the material location where it is going into the assembly line is a big question. So, how will you route the trucks in a manner throughout the company? So, that and, and how will you for example, make a, a short storage or a temporary storage very near its sub assembly or very near its assembly into the final product that route planning is what would eliminate the muda in convince. By any chance you should not make uh, a material handling difference by making a elongated route of the material before it gets subassembled or before it gets fitted into the main product. So, you should try to minimize that distance in terms of its storage location, in terms of its supply location, so on and so forth. So, that is the muda in conveyance. Uh, <coughs> then we have uh, the muda for inventory. Inventory may be considered as a necessary evil. So, obviously, inventory is uh, very much needed because uh, sometimes there are shocks uh, because of defects produced or because of some disbalances which has to be somehow absorbed and inventory is the absorption bed for such shocks in the smooth flow system otherwise. So, you have to uh, have a correction there for the inventory, you should maintain the inventory level by and large to the leanest uh, and this is a part or a sense of the JIT system itself that how the inventory will be at the leanest level or maintained at a leanest level. So, it is necessary because it helps to absorb shocks due to uncertainty in the supplies and acts as an insurance against emergency, although you have to eliminate the extra inventory at all level. And then you have muda for motion and this uh, relates to the unnecessary movement of workers or materials or uh, production or material handling equipments. For example, in a shop floor, particularly in a car assembly, there may be uh, the automated guided vehicles which are uh, the tracks are designed in a manner to sort of uh, handle the, the trolleys or the bins and uh, automatically uh, take and supply to the location that they are used uh, for or the location that they have to be fitted in. And so, in that uh, route planning one has to have the optimistic view that whatever is the closest location of the stock that should be used for routing the AGV to pick up the material and going to the sub assembly level. Okay, so, that minimal amount of movement is there. Similarly, the same thing uh, otherwise can be done by a human being of moving the material from its stock location to its fitment and there is also a lot of muda that can be eliminated in this particular process. And uh, so is the case with uh, the uh, you know the production and material handling equipments particularly. Sometimes uh, the repair equipments need to be in place at the right amount in the right quality and the right levels okay, so that uh, you do not need to really have time delays because of such equipments being in place. So, therefore, there can be muda for motion which can be eliminated for almost all the cases and then finally, the muda for waiting which is normally <coughs> in automated production situations where workers find themselves uh, you know idling at certain place because the previous station has not been able to complete the job. So, by and large this kind of a wasteful activity is a time delay and the balance again gets deharmonized which should be avoided. So, if uh, there is a situation like that there should be immediate addressing and there should be immediate uh, cancellation of that muda for the waiting. Uh, so, that the unnecessary time gets killed and there you immediately supply the worker with uh, the next uh, particular item which he can work in. So, that he does not need to idle at that particular stage. So, these are the different kind of possible mudas or wasteful activities which need to be eliminated when we are talking about muda in a Toyota production system.
So obviously as muda there is mura which literally means unevenness. So as I told you that it is a harmonized situation and any kind of disturbance or disruption in the flow of the material would lead to uh, this unevenness. Uh, this can be irregular for example production volumes, it can be changing workflow patterns, it can be changing production schedules. So all these may actually cause a mura to happen. And uh, this has to be avoided, the mura, the unevenness has to be avoided by and large it has to be a smooth balanced system. And then obviously muri which uh, means that stretching beyond capacity limits or overburdening the capacities of people as well as machines. Obviously if you are giving more workload to a person and not really enough balance then he is going to produce defective parts. And the defective parts is also going to result in a mura which is basically the disbalancing or even many wasteful activities like repair etc which is a muda. So muri is basically the one of the keys that needs to be addressed that give work uh, in a manner that it is capacitated to a person to the extent that he can deliver and do not overburden the particular work center or overburden the particular person so that he can actually do his work in a qualitative manner at the right uh, you know mind frame and he can also <coughs> provide a overall good example for his, for his successor so that uh, the successor also sort of maintains that same culture or harmony across. So Muri is the essence of all this which has to be really uh, the key for a Toyota production system process uh, that this, uh, this work balancing or the work uh, you know assignment has to be justified in terms of a human being's capability. Obviously here is where <coughs> a large uh, philosophical difference comes because there are people who are very hard working and there are people who cannot work in the same manner or there may be problems related to people. So the proper identification of the personnel uh, is also very very important and beyond that proper identification the question of whether the deliverability will be there, there are some misuse factors in between that also needs to be planned. So this is more of a and then also the trainability of the person that how fast the person can learn in a certain workstation is also very very important. So these all essentially mean the muri and this muri has to be addressed at the very beginning when you do the line balancing or when you do the uh, worker or uh, worker assignment or people assignment personal assignment to a particular job okay <coughs> obviously a contrast to the jet system is offered by the american uh, companies which are uh, uh, known uh, for the you know the material requirement planning or mrp based push systems as they call okay and the work in process inventory is used as a means of absorbing uncertainties in the processes and changes in demand uh, which is actually now operating at a very very high uh, you know uh, inventory level. So in practice uh, however such a system often creates uh, many problems including starvation and excessive stocks uh, simultaneously at different stages which may be very difficult to again. Uh, you know balance in terms of the whole process balancing there will be a huge problem in such starvation or excessiveness happens okay it may also lead to conditions of having excessive equipments and surplus workers which is again a major issue and so obviously it has its own advantages but the american system by and large is uh, more resource intensive and uh, the lean manufacturing or the Toyota production system that we have studied so far is less resource intensive and uh, that is one of the major differences that it is more uh, economized manufacturing I would say that is followed if you uh, really closely uh, look at what TPS system has established or TPS system is for. So I think I am going to uh, sort of finish this particular module with a little more uh, you know uh, knowledge to be imparted before we actually start to do the Kanban based designing for such a system. So we will do that or continue that in the next module. Thank you.